Good morning. On behalf of the Equal Justice Coalition, welcome to the 23rd annual Walk to the Hill for Civil Legal Aid, which is also the second annual and second ever Talk to the Hill for Civil Legal Aid. Someday we'll all be back together in person at the State House, but today we again have the privilege of bringing the State House to you right in your homes and offices. We are joined today by state representatives, state senators, and legislative and executive decision makers from across the Commonwealth. We're here today to talk with them and to listen to them. We're here to thank them for their support for civil legal aid in the past and to work with them to fund legal aid for the future. But most importantly, we are here today to help deliver on a promise. We are here today to ensure that Massachusetts delivers on the promise of equal justice for all. Now, most of us who participate in the Walk to the Hill each year are lawyers. Some of us were sworn in as lawyers decades ago, others were sworn in just a few months ago. But whether you've been a lawyer in the Commonwealth for 50 days or 50 years, it turns out you took the very same oath when you were sworn in. That's because we have the oldest attorney's oath in the country, embodied by statute in Mass General Laws, Chapter 221, Section 38, for those of you site checking at home. And one of the things that we promise when we're sworn in as attorneys is to uphold the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. What does our Constitution have to say about civil legal aid? Well, here's what it says. It is the duty of the people to provide for an equitable mode of making laws, as well as for an impartial interpretation and a faithful execution of them that every man may at all times find his security in them. The principle of not just equality, but equity under the law is embodied in our very constitution. And that constitution, which we all agreed to uphold, makes it our duty, all of our duty, to make sure that our laws are made, interpreted, and executed equitably. It is civil legal aid that delivers on that promise. Our constitution promises to everyone in the Commonwealth that they'll receive equal and equitable justice under law. And it is all of our duty, but particularly all of our duty as lawyers to make good on that promise. So when you have a chance to talk with your legislators later today, ask them to stay faithful to our Constitution's promise of equal justice. Today, the need for legal aid is greater than ever. The pandemic intensified the need for civil legal services, while at the same time increasing their costs. That is why, though the incredible funding increases of the last few years have allowed the Massachusetts Legal Assistance Corporation to serve more residents than ever before, still more than half of those who qualify for civil legal aid have to be turned away. The need is just so great. It is on us as citizens, as lawyers, as legislators to make good on the promise of equal justice for those who need it. To do that, we need to serve more people in need. To serve more people in need, we need more lawyers. And to have more civil legal aid lawyers, we need more funding for civil legal aid. The Equal Justice Coalition has asked that funding for civil legal aid be increased by $6 million to a total of $41 million to make good on our promise of equal justice for all. And I'm hoping that you'll at, join us in asking our legislators to do just that. 
I'm now delighted to introduce our Commonwealth's lawyer in chief. You may have seen her name in the news for a variety of reasons these last few weeks. What you may not know is that she has been a staunch advocate for civil legal aid for literally decades, since her own days as a walk to the hill captain. And I can personally attest to that. She was in fact the walk to the hill team captain the very first time I came to the walk many years ago. Please welcome the Attorney General of Massachusetts, Maura Healy. Good morning, it's great to be with you today. The annual Walk to the Hill is an event that I always look forward to. And I wanna thank the Equal Justice Coalition, MLAC, and all the legal services attorneys across the state who day in and day out are advocating for and providing legal help to so many. We know this pandemic has had a devastating and disproportionate effect on low-income residents, communities of color, and immigrants. Legal aid is a lifeline for our most vulnerable neighbors. Today, many people continue to face serious challenges related to housing, employment, healthcare, personal safety, and other financial and legal issues. Some of you have heard me talk about the Attorney General's office as the people's lawyer, the people's law firm. But truth be told, it's the legal services attorneys who are the people's lawyers. My office has had a wonderful partnership with legal aid offices all across the state for many years, and that partnership is critical to so much of the work we do. Every day we're receiving complaints and every day we rely on legal aid attorneys to take on cases to help protect our residents and our communities. Representing workers who didn't get paid what they were owed, preventing families from being foreclosed upon or evicted, helping people navigate the unemployment claims process, working with survivors of domestic violence, and that's just the beginning. The collaboration between the Attorney General's office and legal aid is extensive and covers a range of issues. In order for our work to work as well as possible, we need legal aid to be strong, not only to help the tens of thousands of Massachusetts residents they assist each year, but also to help us identify and to address systemic problems. I've been with you and I will continue to be with you. I am so happy to be here today to once again support the call for the investment in legal aid funding. We may not have walked together in person today, but I'm confident that your passion, your determination, your advocacy will send the message loud and clear about what needs to happen. Thank you for your good work, and I'm proud to be with you in this fight. Thank you, Attorney General, for your career of service and leadership and for your staunch support for civil legal aid. The Equal Justice Coalition is a coalition in its truest sense. Our founding organizations, the Massachusetts Bar Association, the Boston Bar Association, and the Massachusetts Legal Assistance Corporation have worked hand in hand together in the fight for civil legal aid for the last 24 years. I'm now delighted to introduce the leaders of our two partners, Thomas Bond, the president of the Massachusetts Bar Association, and Deborah Manis, president of the Boston Bar Association. Welcome, I'm Tom Bond, president of the Massachusetts Bar Association. I would much rather be speaking to you from the Hall of Flags up on the dais. Afterwards, we could shake hands, rub elbows, you know, share a coffee and a donut. But on the other hand, I saw on the news this morning, there's a traffic jam on Route 128. So if I had to drive into the city today, uh, I'd have been stuck in about three hours of traffic. So we have to look at the positives. You know, this too shall pass. Uh, we are pleased to continue this walk to the hill tradition, now called a talk to the hill tradition, 
in light of the circumstances. We commend the Massachusetts Legal Assistance Corporation and our partners in the Equal Justice Coalition for continuing this important Talk to the Hill tradition. We fully support their funding request for this year. We wanna thank Governor Baker and each and every member of the legislature for your continuing support for funding for legal services. I asked Marty Healy, he's our chief operating and legal officer yesterday about our past funding requests and what happened to them. And he thought about it and he said, you know, I can't remember any time in recent history that legal services were cut or even level funded. Each year it's increased. That's a credit to you. Thank you. And thank you on behalf of the Massachusetts Bar Association and every single lawyer in the Commonwealth. These are important matters. Tremendous demand there is for legal aid. Even with the requested funding that we have, 57% of eligible people last year had to be turned away. We have to continue to work together to advocate for access to justice for all, not just for some. Now, we all know that people who can't afford a lawyer for a criminal case, they have a legal right to be provided a lawyer by the Commonwealth, but not civil, not civil cases. And these civil cases I'm talking about, they're not just fighting traffic tickets at City Hall. These are serious, complicated legal issues related to housing, healthcare, family law, domestic violence, immigration, education, and other life altering issues and matters. Our court system, we all know, is difficult to navigate. We can't expect them to go it alone. They need an attorney by their side. Let me give an example, a few examples. Imagine being a non-English speaking single mother with small children living in an apartment and there's no heat. You call your landlord a few times and you don't get a response. Or losing your job and getting denied unemployment benefits. You know? Or worse, what happens when you've been assaulted by your boyfriend and you just don't know where to turn? These are important life altering issues that cry out for legal funding. And these are the cases that Mass Legal Assistance Corporation and the Equal Justice Coalition, they support every day. And yet more than half of them are turned away because they just don't have the proper funding. So fellow members of the legal community, I'd like to speak to you now. We need to be the voice for our fellow citizens who don't have a voice. Civil legal aid is an essential resource for our most vulnerable residents and families. Please, please, please pick up your phone, call your legislator and ask them to support Mass Legal Assistance Corporation's $41 million budget request for fiscal year 2023. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us here today. And thanks also to the Equal Justice Coalition for its effective advocacy and its creativity in hosting this, a second virtual talk to the Hill. The Boston Bar Association is exceedingly proud to stand alongside the MBA and MLAC as one of the original members of the Equal Justice Coalition. Access to justice is a key plank in our mission and one our members care deeply about. Thanks to all of you who are here today from legal aid agencies, this pandemic has proven yet again that the services you provide are truly essential. And thanks lastly, very much to all of you who are participating in this, the 23rd 
annual lobby day for civil legal aid funding in Massachusetts. Thanks to you, we've seen a tremendous increase in the MLAC appropriation in recent years. More than a three-fold growth in that line item since 2012, including a $6 million increase for the current year. That could not have happened, nor can we achieve our goal of $6 million increase in the coming year without your consistent support. By not only showing up, but also meeting with your senators and representatives, you demonstrate the importance of this funding, both for clients throughout the Commonwealth and for our trial courts. Many of you are here for the first time today, and we welcome you and encourage you to come back year after year. Many of you are veterans to this event. Some of you might even be wondering whether it's worth showing up every year, especially if your legislatures are already supportive of the issue. But I can assure you that with so many other demands for their attention and competing claims on finite budget dollars, we do need to remind our elected representatives each and every year of the critical importance of funding legal services. You have the background information and the talking points to make the case in a way that only lawyers can make it. And I can assure you that if we took a year off to rest on our laurels of our past successes, our absence would be noted. By coming back each January, we emphasize that the need is still there and that access to justice which is ultimately what this event is about, still matters to the bar. So I thank you for joining us today and for meeting with your legislators. After the break, let's go talk to the Hill to get the funding for the legal representation that will help vulnerable people address their basic human needs. Thank you, Deb and Tom, for your inspirational words, and thank you to the BBA and the MBA for your stalwart support. A highlight of the Walk to the Hill every year is hearing from those who have seen firsthand and up close what civil legal aid can do. I'm pleased to welcome to the talk a client of the Massachusetts Law Reform Institute, Carol Walker, to share her story. My name is Carol Walker. I didn't know why I was denied. They called it fraud. And I had three violations against me that um, disqualified me from the SNAP program forever. I had a drug problem. I was in all sorts of abusive relationships. Every time I would reach out to the government for some help, I would like just say, can you just help me with food stamps? They would deny me. When this pandemic thing was like really hit everybody and everybody was like catching COVID and you, I was working and I lost my job. Legal services would take information from me contact them to see what they grounds for not allowing me to be able to qualify SNAP benefits again. They had a violation against me that should have never been there. That was a mistake that they made. And that's when I got legal services and they got to that point where they seen that, okay, this ain't right. And then they decided to overturn the decision and we got to a place where there was a settlement for the SNAP benefits, the food stamps. This past Thanksgiving, I was able to cook a Thanksgiving dinner. 
and I tried to buy everything. <laughs> I tried to buy everything that I like eating. You know, the baked macaroni and cheese, the ham, the turkey, the greens, the cornbread, the potato salad. I grew up on that stuff. People need to know that there's help out here and that nobody should be turned away for food. Yeah, more money, more money to legal services so they can help us people out here that don't know all of the right words to say or the avenues to take or the who to go to see um, in a time of need. Deborah, I, I never, not one time did I feel like she was looking down on me or passing judgment. And everything that she did with the help of legal services, like I was able to get food stamps. I'm so grateful. Good morning. Thank you all for joining us today for our virtual Talk to the Hill. I want to thank clients Carol, Ed, Jean, Fred, and Catherine, who have come forward today to share their stories with us and demonstrate how access to civil legal aid made a significant difference in their lives. And thank you to the advocates and staff who work at the legal aid organizations at MLAC funds. Thank you for your commitment and dedication as we find ourselves approaching nearly two years enduring the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic with no clear end in sight. Legal aid organizations that receive funding through MLAC provide expert help to those facing a wide range of serious legal problems. Workers struggling to receive unemployment benefits, families trying to remain in their homes, survivors of domestic violence seeking safety, students with disabilities exercising their rights to equal education, people facing discrimination or denial of benefits due to mental or physical disability, older adults facing abuse, exploitation, or dangerous living conditions. We know that low-income and vulnerable people across the Commonwealth have been disproportionately affected by the pandemic, and it will take longer for them to get back on their feet. We also know the significant disparate impact that COVID-19 has had and continues to have on people of color, and the consequential impact on their health conditions, access to quality health care, and their ability to remain in stable housing. Even before the pandemic hit, insufficient funding forced legal aid organizations to make difficult choices about who they could help with the limited resources available to them. Fortunately, funding increases over the past few years have enabled legal aid organizations to reduce the number of eligible people who are turned away. Nonetheless, more than 50% of people who qualify for legal aid are still turned away due to insufficient resources. We can and we must do better. The legal aid organizations and MLAC funds collaborate together to gain from each other's ex expertise and to leverage their work as widely as possible. The network of legal services providers in Massachusetts is considered to be one of the best in the country and is a critical part of the Commonwealth social safety net. The pandemic has shined a bright light on the inequities that exist for vulnerable people in need of legal advice and representation. Even with the hope of better outcomes for all of us in the coming year, we cannot afford to lose our focus now. Working together, we can continue to make strides together to offer vital protections for low-income people and continue to work toward making equal access to justice a reality for all. We need your help and support this year. We need your help to increase funding for civil legal aid to $41 million. And now I'm so honored to introduce Supreme Judicial Court Chief Justice Kimberly Budd. Chief Justice Budd joined us last year during our Talk to the Hill event, and we are so pleased to have her here with us today. Thank you for joining us this morning, Chief Justice Budd. We are delighted to have you with us, and we appreciate your commitment to pursuing equal access to justice for all. Good morning. Thank you to all of you who are participating in the Talk to the Hill today, and to everyone who has worked so hard to prepare for it. This event is always important because it gives us an opportunity to address 
the challenges faced by people who are too often forgotten in our society. Those who cannot afford legal counsel to assist them with their most basic civil legal needs. But it's especially important this year because of the ongoing problems caused by the pandemic. It's hard to believe that we are now nearing the second anniversary of the onset of COVID-19. It seems that each time we think we're arriving at the end of this dark period, a new wave of in infections arises caused by a new variant of the coronavirus identified by yet another letter of the Greek alphabet. By now, we are far too familiar with the pain and disruption caused by the pandemic. Many people have lost loved ones. Many others have lost their jobs. Our state unemployment rate hit historic highs in 2020. And although it has improved since then, it was still higher than the national average through much of 2021. With the loss of family members and jobs, many families have been under enormous financial pressure facing the potential loss of their homes. And they've been under great psychological stress as well. Given that reality, it's not surprising that during the past two years, legal aid organizations funded by the Massachusetts Legal, aid, legal Assistance Corporation have seen significant increases in cases involving employment rights, unemployment benefits, housing, and family and juvenile matters. And there's also been a surge in the overall number of cases handled by these legal aid organizations during the pandemic. We are so fortunate that our legislators and the governor have recognized the need for additional funding for legal services during the pandemic. They have stepped up to increase legal aid appropriations substantially over the last two years. But even with that additional money, legal services organizations still must turn away over half of those who seek their help. So today, when you speak to those who represent you in the legislature, please thank them for their steadfast support and ask them to give legal aid lawyers the resources they need to continue to tackle the legal problems faced by those who cannot afford counsel. Until we've conquered the coronavirus, we must continue to deal with its impacts on our society, not just medically, but legally as well. Just as we strive to, pro to provide necessary medical assistance to all who are infected by COVID, so we should strive to provide necessary legal assistance to all who are affected by COVID. So thank you to all of you for taking time out of your day to speak with your legislators, to express your appreciation for the backing in the past and to ask for their continuing support for legal aid in the future. Thank you, Chief Justice Budd. I'm now thrilled to introduce one of our Commonwealth's and our nation's strongest advocates for children, families, and those in need. She is our partner in the United States Congress, working to meet the promise of equal justice at the federal level, as we are doing here in Massachusetts. Please welcome the Assistant Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, Massachusetts Congresswoman Catherine Clark. Hello, and thank you so much for inviting me to speak with you all today. I'm Assistant Speaker Katherine Clark, and I'd like to begin with a thank you for the incredible work you do to ensure every person in Massachusetts has equal representation and protection under the law. You bring our Constitution to life every single day. And right now, that work is more important than ever. The coronavirus pandemic has brought heartache and hard times to so many, from unemployment to food insecurity to loss of life. It has brought isolation and financial strain, severing many from their routines and support systems. And it has exponentially increased the difficulties and traumas 
facing low-income Americans. Since 1999, the Equal Justice Coalition has advocated for state funding for legal aid organizations that provide advice and representation to low-income people facing serious legal issues. The Equal Justice Coalition's annual Walk to the Hill puts a spotlight on the need for legal aid, especially as the COVID crisis continues to threaten the health, safety, financial st stability, and well-being of people across the Commonwealth and the country. And as the largest funding source for civil legal aid organizations in our state, the Massachusetts Legal Assistance Corporation has led the fight to ensure that everyone has access to the professional services necessary to protect themselves in a legal case and secure the benefits they rightly deserve. Throughout the pandemic, your invaluable work has protected people against unlawful evictions, helped them maintain their proper benefits, including Medicare, disability, and Social Security, and protected workers during a time of great personal risk. And you have continued to ensure that critical projects like the Greater Boston Immigrant Defense Fund and Domestic Violence Legal Assistance Project have the funding they need to serve their clients and the Commonwealth at large. That's why I'm so proud to be your partner in Congress. In 2020, House Democrats secured almost $450 million for the Legal Services Corporation. And a year later, we were able to increase that funding by an additional 25 million. Today, I can tell you we have secured 600 million for legal services for fiscal year 2022 and a $135 million increase to meet this moment of incredible challenge. As a member of the Appropriations Committee, I am fighting to ensure that this increase is signed into law and gets this funding to your organizations. In addition, to this funding stream, Congress is working to address the many issues Americans are facing that force them to seek legal help in the first place. Last year, we passed the American Rescue Plan, which included more than $21 billion in emergency rental assistance, $10 billion to help homeowners who are behind on their mortgage and utility payments, and $20 million for the Fair Housing Initiatives Program to investigate fair housing complaints, strengthen enforcement, and assist those who believe they've been victims of housing discrimination. The President's Build Back Better Act will make further life-changing investments in families by closing the Medicaid coverage gap, investing $170 billion in affordable housing, the largest investment in affordable housing in history, and extending key tax cuts in the American Rescue Plan that benefit middle-income workers and families, including the child tax credit, and making $100 billion investments in immigration reform. These are the long-term solutions we need to just not rebuild from the pandemic, but create a more equitable, just society and prevent another crisis of this scope. Of course, we still have a fight ahead of us in Congress to enact these proposals, but look how far we've come and how many Bay Staters have had their lives transformed by your work. And I'd like to acknowledge the brave clients whose stories of recovery and strength through legal aid are truly inspiring. Thank you for being part of this conference. You're the reason we're here, the reason we do this work, and the heart of our fight for equal justice. So even as we struggle with new challenges, we all remain dedicated to the work, and I remain more energized than ever. Thank you again for your partnership and dedication to equality, serving the vulnerable, and ensuring that our justice system works for everyone. Thank you, Assistant Speaker Clark. One of the most fundamental needs 
we all have is for a place to live, a place to call home. And that is why helping clients facing eviction is among the most critical services that civil legal aid provides. Here are four stories from Ed, Jean-Michel, Catherine, and Fred of how legal aid stepped in when their homes were at stake. Uh, my name's Ed. I am a veteran. Uh, I was in the Air Force. Uh, I was a uh, translator from the Russian language when I went to Germany. And uh, I was also, when I got back, I was also uh, a special education teacher. Uh, my name is Jean-Michel Delon. Um, I'm from uh, Haiti. I came here in January 2003. It was the pandemic of 2020. And which was a total lockdown, and, and that's what I did. I locked down. I was quite a bit uh, terrified. I didn't want to get that. While I was working, and then on one day my company called me. Um, they want me to come to Human Resources, and then um, I'm asking them why, and they said they have to send me home because of the COVID, and then um, I was very, very down during that moment. So because of the pandemic, um, I lost my income for like a, uh, a period. I started uh, receiving like letters from my landlord, uh, trying to, um, with the court dates and trying to, you know, evict me. I was in very bad shape because uh, one day I received a uh, eviction notice. I immediately called uh, legal services because uh, I thought I needed some legal help with this problem. I was uh, referred to uh, Taylor and she helped me all the way through the procedure of uh, going to court, representing me, and she did a terrific job. And I got a letter on the mail from uh, Metro S Legal Services. They helped me, uh, like making, almost like making a bridge with my landlord. I knew I had rights, but not really having the resources to execute them properly and working with a landlord who was very hard-headed and unwilling to cooperate. It was, it was hugely beneficial having somebody who knows the law, somebody who knew I had a case that I was right and um, moving forward got me the best outcome that I could have hoped for. It's like, that was like, that was the bridge. She's the one like took me, she took my hand and then like, she said, let me cross you over. If I didn't have a lawyer, I would end up on the street with my kids. <laughs> That's all I can say. They, it's like, it's like a magic touch. When you contact them, things were like that. Because it was a lockdown, uh, most of our contact, my contact with legal aid and uh, to uh, Taylor um, was done on the phone. And I uh, just recently got to meet her. <laughs> and she, uh, she did quite a bit for me, I must say. Uh, it eased my fears and uh, settled my problem quite well. You don't find those people that much in the world, not in America, in the world. People who really have care about people people who really know what they're doing and then who really want to help, you don't find those people. Hi everyone. I want to add my thanks to you attending our second virtual walk to the hill. We certainly thought that we would be able to be in person this year, but these strange times continue. Let's hope the next year will be different. And again, I'm sorry that we don't have buttons or lunch as we have done in the past, but the deal is the same. We want the legislators to know that all lawyers care about access to justice and that legal aid makes a difference in the lives of our clients in assuring that access. That much has been clearly demonstrated, especially during these past two years whether it was to help accessing healthcare, obtaining benefits to meet basic needs, 
such as the child tax credit or unemployment benefits, or to help prevent eviction, or to protect people from domestic violence. Many people are unable to work due to the pandemic or their health status, which meant that they were at higher risk. While some businesses have reopened, many have not because their customers have not returned. Our office has handled a 40% increase in cases over the last year. More people are eligible for our services. People are hurting, and many of, the, of our most vulnerable neighbors who struggled even before the pandemic are at greater risk today. We need increased funding to tackle this dire situation. Many of you have helped us do it last year, and we really need you this year. As you've heard, we will go to breakout rooms where you will be joined by other constituents. So here are the basics. One, make sure that you have your fact sheets for the campaign. They are on the site where you registered, or you may have received them by email. Basically, we are asking you to support the fiscal 20 year request from MLAC, which is for $41 million. This is an increase of $6 million over the fiscal year 22. Talk about why you personally care about funding for legal aid. If you know of or had dealings with legal needs during COVID, talk about how people were helped and how you helped. Navigating the virtual world and these challenging times is difficult, if not impossible, if you have limited access to technology. Imagine the impact of virtual hearings for people with limited tech. Having an advocate makes all the difference in gaining access to justice and fairness. State what you know about the need. We are using Twitter hashtags again this year hashtag I walk for justice and hashtag talk to the hill. Let the world know you're virtually at the hill today to support increased funding for civil legal aid. You should also have a document with talking points. First, you can introduce yourself as a constituent and an attorney. State that civil legal aid is important to you and thank your legislator for his or her past support. Urge your legislator to request 41 million in funding for the Massachusetts Legal Assistance Corporation and ask your legislature, your legislator to make this request one of their top three budget priorities. This is the substance of what you should be saying during these visits, which in a nutshell is, please support increased funding for legal aid. Each breakout room will have a moderator who will facilitate the session and track substantive issues raised. I wanna reiterate that the purpose of this event is to meet with your legislators. I strongly encourage all of you to stay and participate in the breakout sessions. Please don't be discouraged if your conversation today is with an aide rather than with the legislator himself or herself. It is just as effective to talk with an aide and your participation today will not be diminished if you are not talking directly with your legislator. And finally, I wanna thank you all for being here. We appreciate your support and it has been effective. So thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Well, folks, that's it. The legislative visits are now open. When you see your legislators, I ask you to please remember the guidance of our Chief Justice and be sure to thank them for their steadfast support. And tell them what Jean Michel said, that if you're facing an impossible problem, legal aid lawyers are the bridge who will take your hand and cross you over. And don't forget to ask for what Carol told you to ask for, more money, more money for legal services so they can help people who don't know the right words to say, or the avenues to take, or who to go see in a time of need. Ask your legislators to make good on the promise of equal justice.
Now is the time to click on the picture of your senator down below. Thank you and good luck.